Hello, hello. Sometimes it goes and sometimes it don't. Uh, had to take uh, several minutes to get her going this morning, but or this afternoon, but here we are. Hello, everybody. Good to see you on this awesome Monday. You got to love Monday. It's got its quirks, but it's uh, another day that the Lord has made. As always, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Hoping this this day has found you all well and full of faith. And I was hoping you guys enjoyed your Mother's Day weekends as well. Oh, man, it was so good talking, teaching everybody on Sunday and all the beautiful faces that we saw. <laughs> what a great time. It was good, you know, actually having people staring back at you. <laughs> Instead of looking into that black hole of the camera. Like we're doing now. And it's good to see you guys there. Hello, hello. Oh, man. You know, I just, uh, we gave the honor to not only mothers with children, but mothers without children, if that makes any sense. As the word says, the, the mothers that aren't able to have children will have more children than the ones that are able to in the flesh. As we come to the Lord and follow him in truth, the Lord will give you many children. Amen. That's a beautiful thing about God. He never, he is always filling the void, you know. He never leaves anything undone. He's always there. But I just want to praise the Lord for you guys and uh, say happy Monday. And here we are getting ready to jump into John chapter 17. If any of you are driving, now make sure you're not watching, but just listening. We just love to hear the stories of everybody that's... Uh, listening to us as they're driving home from work too that's what an honor that's such an amazing thing to me and thank you for your time i just want to thank everybody for their time this is beautiful john chapter 17 this is uh my wife and i's favorite one of my wife and i's favorite chapters of the bible and one day i came to my wife here and and i said it Sweetheart, have you met the Lord? She said, well, not yet. And I said, well, I want to introduce you to him. And I, I showed her the Bible, you know. I said, this is him. He is the Word. And the Word was with God, right? We know how that goes in John chapter 1. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is the Lord. And the more we learn about him, the better off we are. And I said, now... John chapter 17 is one of the best places in all the Bible because this is where the Lord actually prays for all of us. He asked the Father some favors. And this is something that is so awesome. And I pray that you guys will enjoy it too. Well, I see a few. Hello, dear. <laughs> uh, she's she's kind of helping us keep tabs. If anybody has any prayer requests or anything, we just say Bring them to us uh, here. That's one good place. Or you can send them to us on the website or call or any way you can. And uh, make sure to hit those likes and hearts and all that stuff and share if you don't mind. The more we share, the more we're getting the word out. And the more God is glorified. It's all about him. Amen. Is that music in the background too loud? Anybody say, say so? Yes or no? I know it takes a minute for that to go get out there. I don't know if you can tell, my Mia. Maybe you can't hear it at all. I don't know. Well, so far I'm going to guess we're okay. All right. John chapter 17 says, These things spake Jesus. You know what? I'm going to get my other Bible because this one gets a little tricky. That was the, uh, I love that, the Geneva Bible, the one that the pilgrims brought back with them. But it's got that old English in it. It's a little tricky to, to get through. John chapter 17. Now Jesus spoke these things and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that the Son may glorify you. Okay, I see a no. No, it's not too loud. That's what I'm. What I'm thinking that you're saying. <laughs> hey, Mom. Good to see you guys, Aunt Sonny. Good to see y'all. I can see some of you, not everybody. Okay. 
Now the Lord, remember that was just after the Passover, the last dinner, the last supper. And he had all the disciples there. And they were talking to, each, to them all and getting them ready for his parting. And he was trying to get them all in the right heart, you know. He says, these things, and I'm going back to 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world. In the world you will have tribulation. But take courage, for I have overcome the world. Jesus spoke these things then, and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, and how tender of a statement that is. And when we say Heavenly Father or Abba, it would have been the word Abba that he used. Abba, my Father, such a tender endearment. The hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. He knew how dark and terrible this hour was going to be because the wrath of God was about to come upon him for sin. He was going to take sin upon himself and deal with it once and for all. He said, even as you gave him authority over all flesh, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. Amen. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That is eternal life. I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself and with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have come to know that everything you have given me is from you. From the words which you gave me, I have given, given them. And they received them, and truly understood that I came forth from you. And they believed that you sent me. I ask on their behalf. Hear that? I ask, says the Lord, on their behalf. I do not ask on my behalf of the world. I do not ask on behalf of the world, but of those whom you have given me, those who are believing in him and walking with him. He asks on our behalf, for they are yours, and all things that are mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have given and I have been glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world. And I come to you, O holy Father. Keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. Is it possible for us all to be one together? The only way it is possible, everybody's got their own opinions and ideas and ways they think they should go about doing things and even living life, and even living life according to the way of the Lord. But only by His Word, if we will line up with His Word, then we're all going to become one, as one, we'll move as one, we'll love as one, we'll honor Him as one. And it says, while I was with them, I was keeping them in your name. He was keeping them as one according to his standard, which you have given me. And I guarded them, and not one of them perished, but the son of perdition, which was on his way still to betray him, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things speak I in the world, so that they may have my joy made full in themselves. <laughs> that means even in this life, joy made full in themselves, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world, I do not ask you to take them out of the world. Hear that. That's interesting but to keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, 
even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth, for your word is truth. So many things being said right there is so incredible. He's saying, I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. So he's not saying, rescue us and take us out of this evil place. For he knew that, you know, all of them, he knew of the end. All the things that were going to happen, the, those that would be martyred. And ultimately, he throws all of us in like sheep in the midst of the wolves, you know. And uh, Oh, I don't know if that's a great plan or not. When I'm thinking about that, it's just like, oh my goodness. That, that, if, there was, if it was a duel... You wouldn't throw a sheep in the, the lion's cage and say, okay, it's up to that sheep to win. <laughs> it's a different kind of duel, no doubt about it. Here we are as lambs in the midst of wolves. But even still, the Lord says, I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but that you will keep them from the evil one. And can the evil one attack them and, and do harm? Absolutely. He said, we're not to fear the one who can kill the body, but the one who can kill the body and the spirit as well. But he put leaves us in the world like this, that we might be the salt of the earth, that we might be that light that gives one more hope. So it's interesting how all of that, sorry, I'm getting a message there and I'm hoping that it doesn't knock me off. <laughs> so it's interesting how all of that plays out, you know, and how we're seeing that the Lord himself has decreed this to happen. It says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. But as we were talking about in the service yesterday, that enemy is going to rage. But fear not, for greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Amen. It says, sanctify them in truth. Now here we're talking about the disciples. Do the disciples still need to be sanctified? Absolutely. Sanctify them in the truth, and your word is truth. And as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. For their sakes, I sanctify myself. He checks himself, even, to make sure he's going along according to the word. And he sets himself apart. And this is what being sanctified is, is to be separate. A vessel that is set apart and, and reserved for the work of the Lord. For their, sa for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they themselves also may be sanctified in truth. For he is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those who also who believe in me through their word. So it's not only for just the disciples he's praying for, but also you and me, all of us who can believe his word and follow him. It is a glorious thing to see the Lord doing this. That they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. That the whole world may believe that you sent me. So this is one thing that helps it, us to walk in the way of the Lord. It helps our testimony that we love each other and that we are loving to those around us and even our enemies to be loving to one another. All of these things helps our testimony. And as we rise up as one, not looking for vain glory or anything like that for, oh, look at me and look at what I've done, but it's look what, what we have done. And look what the Lord has done through us as we sanctify ourselves, as we separate ourselves for his work and his business. Then the Lord can be glorified through all that we do. Is that good news? That is awesome news. I just love it. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them. They may be so they may be one that they may be one. Just as we are one, Jesus and God were one. I in them and you in me, that they may be perfect in unity. <laughs> oh, I would I so desire that. I so desire that. I desire that for our church. I desire that for our family. And as all of us can be one in him. Man, what a great world this would be if the whole world could come to that place. And it will one day. 
that day that the Lord sets up rain here in the world. We're going to enjoy this world without the curse because the day is coming that we will be one. This was we were talking about yesterday and because his word's going to go throughout all the world and all that are there are going to be believers only. It's going to be a believe only club. <laughs> but then that enemy, he'll be tied up for a while. But then he'll be loosed for a short time too. That's another. That's another Bible study. Uh, Father, let's see. So they can be perfect in unity, so that the world may know that you sent me, and love them, even as you have loved me. Amen. Father, I desire Adonai, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am so that they may see my glory, which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, although the world has not known you, yet I have known you, and these have known that you sent me, and I have made your name known to them, and will make it known again, so that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. Very shortly thereafter, the betrayal happens. And here he knows this is about to happen, and look at the love that was just coming from him. You know, when I if I know that something <laughs> is about to probably go wrong in my world, I'm not necessarily thinking about loving thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I may be thinking other things, you know. And what a testimony to see how loving the Lord was and is continually. He's never not loving. I mean, even at the time when he's there going through his demise on the cross, he's still crying out, Father, forgive them. I don't I forgive them. They know not what they do. That's a tender part for me. It's a precious thing what the Lord does, and He's still continuing to pray for you. He comes and stands between us and God continually, just as He did right there in that prayer. As the high priest, He is coming right now, an intercessory prayer between us and God, and asking favor for God that we may become one in Him, that we may be able to, hi, uh, Miss Jamie, hi, um, how we might be able to come together and love each other. That's what it's all about. And if we can do that, then we can know that that prayer right there is still going out for all the world to hear. For all those who will believe. And what is believing? Those that hear his word and do it. I pray that you guys can charge forward and do his word this week. <laughs> and even this great and glorious Monday. Oh, glorious Monday, we'll call it. Everybody hangs their head low, but hey, it's just one more chance to get it right, you know, and get draw closer to God. I love every chance we get, no doubt about it. Well, thank you guys for joining me, and just as I, I like to promise, I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet. And can't wait to talk to you all again tomorrow. Hopefully it'll it'll start right on time. I was there, I, I set an alarm on my, my phone, and it goes off a quarter till, and then five till, and then right at five o'clock, so I know... Because when I started on my phone, it the clock is taken away, so I can't watch it. But um, if uh, I'm doing it on, I tried it on the computer, but it just it wouldn't work. And so keep praying for us. That, that old devil's still fighting, trying to get things messed up. But we're just going to keep charging forward and fighting it out and doing all we can to get that good word out there every day. And share if you would, if you like it. And all right, well, I appreciate you guys. I love, well, matter of fact, I love you all with all my heart. No doubt. And we're praying for each and every one of you. Because every time I see the, the the names on there of everybody that's, that's watching and joining in, I just take a minute and just pray for each and every one of you that the Lord, through the power of His Holy Spirit, will be speaking to you and, and loving you back, you know, and leading each and every one of us to that right place in Him. Because all of us want to be praying that same prayer. Father, find us worthy to escape the trials to come. Because they're going to be such that nobody has ever seen before. So terrible. So keep praying that prayer. 
keep charging on, run that good race. Amen. All right. Love you guys. And remember, above all else, what? Love each other and trust in Jesus. Bye-bye.